If you've ever wished you could store and record the exposure information for your analog film photography, then you need to take a look at the Canon Technical Back E, which was released for Canon's EOS 650, 620 and 630 cameras, the first generation EOS cameras. It's amazing. The Canon Technical Back E was released along with the EOS 650 and 620 in 1987. It was an evolution of the T90 data memory back released for the Canon T90. The backs of the first generation EOS cameras are interchangeable and Canon released three backs. The standard back, which just has a film window in it. The one you'll see most common on eBay is the Canon Quartz Date Back E. This just allows basic film data printing, like date and time, nothing else. Canon's technical back E is a tour de force of technology. It does four things. It stores all of the exposure data in its memory for up to 10 rolls, 360 frames. It can imprint that data onto the film. So you can choose three different items to print, date and time, exposure information. You can even add notes. Another feature is that the back offers uh, a huge amount of control over auto exposure bracketing. The other feature is an intervalometer where it will do timing up to 100 hours. Canon says one, well, Canon says 99 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds, but that's one second short of 100 hours, so we'll call it 100 hours. You can do um, delayed exposure for up to 100 hours and you can do timing for 100 hours and you can do groups of 99 in 100 hits. You can do amazing things. I'm not really interested in anything except for the data storage feature. I'm not really interested in the data imprinting Data imprinting was, a, was an insta fad a few years ago where everybody was getting data print cameras. But you realize that your negatives have now got a date and time indelibly stamped across them. The novelty of that wears off pretty quickly. The technical data back doesn't just print date and time, you can print exposure information. In this example, you can see I've opted to print the exposure information, which includes shutter speed, aperture and lens focal length. Note that it's burnt into the negative, you can't get rid of it. One option that is really handy is there's an option for the data back to print a serial number. It prints the serial number just before the first frame of the roll. It's a way of identifying your rolls of film. Let's look at how the back fits onto the camera. Here is our EOS 630, first of all, it's got patch in it, yep. Check to see that uh, it's got no film, open the back. And there is a small pin here to remove the back. The standard back, the technical back fits on like that. The, the technical back itself takes two button cell batteries underneath here. I've already checked those and changed them. The back only works when the camera has film in it. So we're going to do a film loading video. Loading film into the Canon EOS camera is nice and easy. Draw the film across. Line it up. Close it up. Turn it on. And there we go. Now, there's a second door under here. And we turn it on. 
and there you can see all of the options. The first thing I'll be doing is I will be adjusting the date and time on the back. To do that, we let's get this a bit closer. We use these buttons here to navigate through the menus. With the unit on the main screen, you navigate with the arrow keys. I'm going to choose the imprint function. I choose date and then I click on the set button. It now asks me to enter the year, month and uh, date format. Notice that the default date is the 1st of January 1987, a reminder of how old this technology is. So I'm going to keep the um, the date as that. You can scroll through. Now, 1987. I'm going to increase that. 91. 00 is 2000. 10. It's 21. I go to the month is 12. And the day is 20, 28th. I'm going to hit set there. And we're back here. Now we shall choose the time. We shall adjust the time. Choose set and the time here is, I don't know what the time is. I'm going to pretend that it is Okay, we're going to set the time. We're going to choose the time as being 2.43. So 2 is, will be 14. Forty-three. You can also choose seconds. There we go. The date and time has been set. Choose menu. Okay. To have the camera record memory data, we select the option with M. See the dot there, M, and we go into the sub menu and we get to choose which data it records. Normal means it records all of the uh, 13 options of data. Reduce means it, it records less exposure data, but it, it can hold more. Uh, you can record notes and you can clear the data that's been in there. So I'm going to choose normal, set. I'm going to go back to the menu. And if I go back now, notice that my screen here now says M361. That is saying it is now recording exposure data and it has enough room for 361 exposures. Now, according to the, according to the book, there is one feature that is very nice and that is if you set the imprint function to TVAV, when you go back to your screen, see how it now says dot 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 and F dot dot dot. When you go back to the screen, it will display the shutter and aperture that the camera is currently set to. Now, at the moment, I don't have a lens. So let's put a lens on. Let's put a lens on. This is my 20 to 35 zoom. And there we go. Look at that. 
it's saying a sixth of a second, a tenth of a second of the four, and as I change that, it's changing. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Now, what do we do now? Well, what we do now is we take a few photos. I'm just gonna just gonna sit here, take some photos. Um, I'm just on my thingy here. There we go. Vary the aperture. Okay, I'm in TV mode. I'll change to change it to. Sorry, I was in AV mode. I was in AV mode. I'll change it to TV mode. I will add some exposure compensation to a couple of pictures. And let's take a look at what the back's done. I went all the way back to the main screen. And here we have some really cool information. Look at that. There we go. So I use the arrow keys to scroll down. I'm up to exposure number 22. I can go through and view what the settings were. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. So you can see that exposure number one was 750th per second. Ah, that symbol there means it was evaluative metering. 750 second x 4.6 at 20 millimeters. Okay, two was 20. I changed the aperture a few times. I then changed the um, focal length of the lens. 34, 35, 32, 31. Good. AV. I then changed it in to TV into shutter priority mode and it recorded that. Very good. How's that? Ah, it now changed to plus 1.5. Do you see that? Plus 1.5 appeared. So that's my exposure compensation. So this back, and this is really what's quite amazing with the EOS cameras. Everything is digital. Everything is, is, is computerized. Everything, it is a computer. It is a robot. It is a computer that takes pictures. Back in the day, you could order a data interface unit to plug your technical back E into a personal computer which was an IBM PC. Those interface units are extremely rare and there aren't such things as PC compatible computers any well, there aren't such things as IBM PCs anymore. So, uh, but the software is long gone, so you can't do it. But apparently that could be used to operate the camera remotely. So something like the equivalent of a tethered photography. But right now I use the back to record the data when I get back, I go through the back and I write all of the information down into a spreadsheet where it's stored. And then I can look back and say what lens it was, what date it was, what time it was, what the aperture was, etc. Very handy.